We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Space Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really appreciate earning your listening ears. Want to say that all of our archives are free by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. It's that time once again where we get into some UFOs. The unbiased UFO report, we bring in the man with the black fedora, John Hudson, to break it all down for us. John, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. I'm, I got to admit, I think I'm still a little in shock from that guest, but um, you know, I'm I'm happy to be here. Happy to be here. Great to have you here again. And we're going to start off with the BlackVault.com. John Greenwald coming up with some brand new news here. What do you got for us? Yeah, so there's a lot to cover. If you can all stick around for three hours, I'd appreciate it. Um, but we'll try to get through what we can. Um, there's so much happened this weekend. It was a crazy 72 hours. Um, so hats off to John Greenwald again. The cool part about this finding is it's another collection of these briefing cards. But the great thing about this is, is these are the briefing cards going from September 19th, 2019, all the way June 25th, 2021. And so what that means is if you look at them all, and he offered the link, and I'll post one too, you can see the, the progression of the messaging. You can see how the messaging reacts to certain events when one report came out or when a video was released. You can really see the kind of way that, the, that they were reacting defensively to what was going on in the outside world. And uh, it was it, it's, it's a really educational thing. And the only thing I want to, want to call out on it, even though there's many other things that I should call out, is they've specifically called out what Dr. Eric, uh, um, uh, oh my God, I cannot believe I forgot the poor guy's name now. Um, it, yeah, uh, Eric Davis um, uh, said in the New York Times article about off-world vehicles, they specifically said on on this on the, a side note on the slides by the end by the New York Times published, this slide was not used by the DoD ever. And off-world is not an official term used by the DOD. <laughs> and I just love the fact that they felt the need to call out a, and, and put some distance between them and, and Dr. Davis, um, which shows how closely they're watching. So it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, quite a good, it's quite a good find by, by John Greenwald. Tom DeLong continues to be in the news. Yeah, so this, one, this one's funny because... Um, you know, this is a quote that should have appeared in the other article because this is from Guitar World and this was about music. But um, as Tom does, he sometimes just talks when he feels like talking. And um, and he goes into a surprising amount of detail about um, what happened when they found the videos. And he says that they, actually there was 26 of them and that, that was actually a small branch from a much bigger tree. Some of them having videos of UFOs only 10 feet away, tracking them for 20 minutes, UFOs going 600 miles an hour, pilots screaming and freaking out, um, all sorts of things. But essentially, these were the only videos they were able to get out. And uh, the, de the, the quote's more detailed than that, and I'll post it, but it, it, that's the most information I've seen about what they found outside of those three videos in the last four years. Do you think Tom released that statement? Because let's face it, Tom has been known to exaggerate things a little bit at times, which is why we saw a lot of his Instagram and Twitter posts pulled down after being up for an hour, hour and a half during the TTSA. Do you think that maybe this is his little screw you to Elizondo, Mellon, and, and Justice leaving by mentioning that there were 26 videos available? No, I, I definitely could see how it could be perceived that way. I, I, I totally get where you're coming from. But um, I, I, I don't honestly, I don't think Tom works that way. And, and I think that this was just this was just Tom's inside voice making its way to his outside voice when it probably wasn't supposed to. Um, he, he just he lacks that filter. And um, and essentially, this is probably something he's been wanting to say for a long time. And, and I'll differ with you in that. Yes, I think that he ends up exaggerating at times. 
I don't think he exaggerates beyond what he believes. I think he really sees it that way. I, I think he really saw it all that way. And I, I think I think to him, he's not exaggerating. It just may be exaggerating okay. to the rest of us if we compare it objectively to what's really happening. And the reason why I asked that, because that could be potentially huge news that there were 26 yes. videos and yes. that, you know, they almost got the one out, which would have been yes. Elizondo and Mellon, obviously trying to get that out. But yes. I mean, the fact that nobody has ever talked about 26 yes. videos, this is the first we're nope. hearing about it. Yep. Yep. In, in a Guitar World magazine article that has a very unfortunate title. What's the title? Um, uh, honestly, I didn't even write it down, Dave, because I, I, I didn't want to risk saying it. It's, it's, a... <laughs> oh my, oh my, you, <laughs> it's, used, it's, your, it's, you used your yeah. editing skills there. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Yeah. It's, it was, it was quite a quote. It was quite a quote. It was quite a quote. Yeah. I'll well, post a link to it. <laughs> well, I mean, that is, that is incredible. Wow. I'm, I'm stunned by the 20 yeah, videos yeah. that, was, that are meant there. No kidding. All right. The biggest news coming out is literally about Elizondo, Mellon, and the UAP report. Yeah, this is um, so this, this the timing of this was was incredibly fortuitous um, at the moment. Um, at the time, all this broke. Uh, Elizondo was in. Um, uh, I don't remember exactly what town he was in, but he was in Italy um, or in that area uh, for a conference. And um, and basically a bunch of news kind of broke in parallel. The one thing you, was you had a, a very impressive presentation by Elizondo that um, uh, uh, is, it has been recorded and will be posted where he not only shows three slides that cover in detail how he perceives yesterday, today and tomorrow with some very interesting data points that should be drawn out. I mean, honestly, we could talk about that for two hours. And then at the same time, the new bill comes out, the appropriations bill for the military, H.R. 4350. And this bill is, well, as Elizondo put it, this is a great way to start third gear. Um, basically, what, what he said pretty much point blank was, this is the fruit of the last five years of labor. This is the point. Um, and if you read through um, the the, and I'll, I'll post the, the you know, what I can of the of the direct report because it, it's like it's like two thousand pages or something. So you got to dig for what you want. But basically, what it says, real briefly, is they're making the UAP, they're dissolving the UAP, uh, the UAP task force, and they're making it an official department in the uh, office of the uh, Secretary of Defense. And so this this basically makes it legitimate. And this means funding. This means headcount. This means authority. This means um, this means we're playing real baseball now. This is the big leagues. One of the big things that I was talking to Bob McGuire about this earlier today was crash retrievals. The fact mm -hmm. that they put in there crash retrievals need to be known to the public. All right. Now, the one thing that Bob said was. The government is not putting that in there about crash retrievals if the people writing it didn't already know that the United States military does have extraterrestrial craft and crash retrievals in their hands. Correct. Correct. And, and, and I'll go further and I'll say that the, much of the language in this is very smart politically defensive language. They worded things in several places that specifically block wiggle out points that have been abused in the past. That when they list what kind of intelligence they want, they list everything. They list all the ints. They, they go through this whole laundry list. When they talk about crash retrieval, they talk about any, any technology derived from uh, retrieved craft vehicles as, as if they're, they already do have them. The language is very specific. The other great part is they actually talk about specifically having an area to study the effects of contact on people. So this is taking what, what Burroughs went through, what John Burroughs went through, and basically making it official. No longer will you have to fight tooth and nail to get, you know, 
proper medical care for 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 results of a contact. Now this office is actually going to look into those, and we can start making it official that some people are getting wounded by something, and we don't know what it is, and we need to figure it out. The fact that this is now going to become an official department of UFO research, I mean, this is right out of the television show, The X-Files. I mean, we've, Absolutely. Al we've already known that there are departments like this within the alphabet agencies of the Pentagon. So do those agencies that have been so secretive before, do they now culminate together under one roof? Or is each department, whether it's the CIA, the NRO, the NSA, do they all keep their own hidden teams? No, you, you, you will you will have you will have this beautiful you know bureaucratic tiered structure where essentially you, you know a lot of those offices will still exist. Some of them will turn public, you know, turn to be more public. Someone, some of them will create new offices to show to the public so they don't have to expose their secret one, right? But right. a lot of the language in this is designed to prevent people from avoiding reporting. So that's why there's there's things in there that say like, you know, every every 90 days you have to report everything that's happened in the previous 90 days plus anything that's happened before then that you didn't report in the previous section going back to like 40 something. So I mean they're they're like whoever wrote this um, it was, it, it was done by someone with a lot of experience. Let me put it that way. It's, it's well, very well done. You know, let's just hope this isn't talk. Let's hope that there is some sort of actual evidence because this is earth changing. This is absolutely earth changing. Well, and, and I'm not going to lie. It, it's a little scary that, that this is now coming out and, and maybe it's me, man, but for me, it's it's really starting to show the legs of what I was saying to a lot of people in our chats, on our show here, and, and it's really, uh, what's the words I'm looking for? To me, there's a date that's been set. There's no reason, there is absolutely no reason for any of this over the last three years to all of a sudden come out, unless something's about to happen within the, and there's a timeline of when this is about to happen. The, the, the one, the one exception that I would give to that. And the one, one aspect that worries me is that there is a, there is a, a timeline on this and I'm trying to remember, I apologize. I got too much in my head if it's four years or five years, but there is there is a, a sunset essentially to say that you know um, you know at, at this point you know we have to reevaluate whether we continue this or not, and um, and it's it's I, I believe it's I believe it's five years, um, but the the problem with that is is that if the language is not tight enough, and if someone figures out a way to wiggle, then all they have to do is continue to wiggle for a certain amount of time, and they might get out of of reporting. Because let's face it, if by some weird twist of fate, right? And I wouldn't believe this, but we saw what happened before with Blue Book, right? So we have to acknowledge this is possible. If somehow five years from now, they don't have anything. I, I can't even imagine how that would happen. But I'm just saying if, then they would have an excuse to say, okay, look, we're closing it because we, we did our five years and, and, and we looked and we didn't find anything, right? Which is what they did to us before. So there, you know, there, this, this isn't, this isn't, um, you know, this isn't a get out of hell free card, right? But what this is is this is this is a uh, this is this is a uh, this is this is an opportunity for pole position. And we if get I were to start to, the race at pole position. And if I were to to look at it from an outsider's perspective, I would also say too that this looks like something that that could be very life altering in the next few years. It really could, if everything comes to fruition that they are saying, because this is something that's going to affect every person on this planet, every single one. I, I, I could not agree more. And, I, and I'll also add this. There, were, there were moments when Lou talking about this where he was excited. I mean, Lou, the person, the human, was excited. And at some level, everyone should just don't get lazy but take 30 seconds pour yourself a drink 
we should all be congratulating ourselves over this. This is this is what we've been fighting for, and this is where things start getting real. And this is a big deal, and we should all be pretty excited about this. All right, John, thank you so much for uh, dealing with this. I'm going to go right into our main man, our main spook, Mr. Elizondo, getting ready to write a book, right in the news. Here we go. Yeah.